Cool. All right. Let's uh, let's kick things off. Um, so thank you so much to uh, to everyone for uh, for joining our second edition of the Lifeload Dashboards webinar. Um, we we held a, a webinar a few weeks back where we presented a product and um, it has been sort of taken by storm, if you will, um, with a ton of excitement and uh, and uh, engagement. So um, this time around, we are going to go through a quick overview of um, it's who's joining us as me again. Okay, maybe there's a double me. Okay, interesting. Um, anyhow, so we are going to go through the um, uh, the uh, a bit about the product in terms of um, what it can do and how it works, and then we will give you guys a uh, a demo, of course, um, and uh, give you an overview of the latest updates to the product and where it is uh, headed. Um, cool. So, can I just get a quick thumbs up from the Lifeload team that you see the screen? Everything is good. Okay, fantastic. Great. So, um. Basically, we just want to give a quick uh, overview of, of why we're building uh, Lifeload dashboards. Um, so <clears throat> just for, for some context, um, uh, for anyone that has used Lifeflow before, you all know that we have these um, many, many Excel and Google Sheets templates that we have built over the years. Um, and our uh, product was first built for Google Sheets and then later for Excel, where we helped to bring live accounting data into uh, your spreadsheet so that you could create these live um, dashboards for either your clients or for your business. And um, one of the things we have seen uh, continuously over the years is that everyone kind of has a different way of creating a dashboard, especially when the dashboard is created in Excel or Google Sheets. Uh, the challenge with that is that these dashboards are often very customized and requires a ton of formulas to sort of set up, um, which is why we have spent so much time on creating these, um, these templates that a lot of you have either seen or tried or dealt with or uh, in any shape or form sort of uh, experienced. Um, this is just one example. Uh, we have our monthly client reporting dashboard that some of you have seen. We have a AR dashboard. Uh, we have a, a dynamic three-statement uh, cash flow forecasting um, and a lot of other ones. And so tons of hours has, uh, has been sort of developed uh, or has been gone into making these templates. Um, and we've learned a ton from them. And um, We've also learned that these formulas that you see here can be very hard to figure out how to use um, and even harder to, to debug. Um, so really the goal of, of Liveflow dashboards um, is to, uh, for us, it's, it's to combine the flexibility of a spreadsheet um, with ease of use so that anyone on your team can create these beautiful and tailored um, financial reporting packages and then share them with the client. And really the the whole point is that we want to make it so easy to create that you don't have to worry about formulas at all. So with that, uh, I will hand it over to Josh, who is going to give a quick overview of things, and then we will go around to Alicia and to Shane. So Josh, do you want to take it away? Sure. Um, thanks so much, Lassie. Uh, as Lassie said, uh, this product, I think, is, has taken us uh, by storm um, in that there's been a lot of engagement over the past month, um, whether you're a bookkeeper, a fractional CFO, in terms of amending the advisory package, for instance, that you're hoping to, to offer to your clients. Um, so the hope of this webinar is in part to uh, address people who are seeing this for the first time, uh, as well as uh, we know that there's some people who tuned in for the first webinar as well. So Alicia is going to kind of showcase some of the updates along with Shane. Um, but for the first part, we're going to um, take a look at how we can build um, from the basics uh, for uh, our, our newer audience um, using Liveflow dashboards. So I'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen here. Give me one sec. And uh, meanwhile, Josh pulls this up. Um, please feel free to drop any questions or comments in the chat uh, as we are um, going through the um, the walkthrough. Um, we really encourage it. It makes it a whole lot more engaging. Um, and uh, yeah, we're happy to answer any questions. Meanwhile, I think Josh's Wi-Fi has has uh, has disconnected. 
That's right. Uh, give me one second. Maybe do we want to maybe Alicia, do you want to, do you want to just kick it off? Yeah, maybe that's best. Yeah. Cool. No worries, Josh. Yeah. Um, it's uh, generally how it goes with demos sometimes. So, okay. Let me just share my screen and <clears throat> yeah, and can someone just confirm if this is visible? We see it good. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Uh, all right. So um, I know that many of you are joining us for the first time. You may have seen some of our promos going out, but with this product that you see here lives in our Lightflow web app. So in case you haven't seen this, if this is your first time seeing this interface, it's available at app.lightflow.io. And once you come in, you should be able to see dashboards um, if you have the trial enabled over here, right in the sidebar. And yeah, this is basically where the, the magic happens. So we once you start, you have the option to use one of our many templates. And we have quite a few. Um, for those of you who are joining, you may see some new ones from the last time. We keep adding these as we go. We have some for consolidation, and we will very soon be having some for zero as well, if any of your clients are using those. So let me just show you the flow. So if in case you want to get started and you want something ready-made out of the box, you can just come in here. You just hit use template. And you can see it kind of loads everything with your clients right out of the box. You can switch this pretty easily. And the main thing to take away here is that everything that we see here is fully, fully customizable. So let me say, I think this one take something with data. So as you can see, this one is a weekly dashboard in case you're doing weekly reporting, but you can very easily just switch this to be a monthly cadence uh, by allowing, so you can swap this to, um, take like a larger date range and each component that you see here will also respond to either its own date range or it can respect the dashboard date range. And we can also swap this. So I'll just give you a simple example. So this is cash by week. I'm just going to give this a, its own custom date range. And let me see let, if I want to look at the last quarter, and I want to display columns by, uh, let's say maybe week. No. Yeah, I this one. Yeah, so you can see that the date range has changed and now my grouping is now by week rather than by day. I can also switch this to be something like class or um, when my demo data doesn't have four to five periods, but this is something, if that's something that's available in your QuickBooks, you can always choose that and, and show your data against that dynamic. And we also have the option to add text and key takeaways based on anything that you see here. So, if let's say you, you want to start from these templates, but then you want to edit it and you want to make it your own in some way, you can always just come, come in here, hit add component and add any of these this big library that you see here um, within this dashboard. You can always create your own entirely from scratch as well. So let's say you're, you're, you're not doing this, this is not relevant to you. You want to make a full monthly dashboard from scratch. You can just come in here, click connect your company, hit add component, and let's see, we can start with something like this one. Take a different company. And uh, you'll see a, a whole lot of data in the table view. We can also give it its own title. Or you can come in here and swap how you want this to appear. You can swap the underlying data. Let's say I want to show my net income. And then I add a bit more and a bit more. And obviously, we want to stop before it gets uh, too overwhelming for a viewer. 
but the the idea is that you can keep adding these as as you need. Alicia, I have a you quick can... question. I, I saw that you've you've um added <clears throat> added series. Where is that information coming from? Yeah, so um if I or basically the way this works is every every component of ours kind of works like a a table. Each and every component has its own underlying data. And you can always switch back to a table to see exactly what that looks like. And each of these is its own series. So when I swip, swap over to a bar line chart, and then you can see by default, it's picked up the first two columns. But when I hit add series, it's now going to pick up the next one and so on and so forth. So it's you can always just come back to the table logic to check. I guess that's a... Got it. It, that's a common question that I know some people do ask. <laughs> so, yep. So this this is maybe basically the the core functionality of these dashboards. And there's there's almost limitless customizations that you can keep doing here. So you want to display your columns by class actually rather than by month. So you just come in here and change, and it dynamically updates. And <clears throat> let's make this something simpler. Now, this is maybe relevant for um, everyone who was here last time. So in the last two weeks, we've been really busy and we've added a whole lot of new capabilities that were were in a large, you know, by in large part driven by the feedback that we got in the last webinar as well as in the days that followed. So over here now, you can add tabs. So your reporting packages is are now much more structured and organized, and you can display more information and basically guide your client's flow in a much better manner. So you can come in here, you can call this whatever you want. Um, hi. And then maybe in here, I can start with my simple profit and loss metrics on a high level. And I can always compare this so you can see this is now showing me a month over month change and I can then have another kind of tab over here which now goes a little deeper into what exactly it is that I have um, spent my money on oh, one sec. so yeah, I Great. think this view is, yeah. And cool. more importantly, we've also added some uh, financial statements. So if you want to see the entire PL or the entire balance sheet or cash flow laid out, you can add it here. You can also quickly give a rolled up view, just like that. And this functionality is also available on our consolidation site. So if you want to show a rolled up PNL or a consolidated PNL, you can do so. And again, the same functionalities that we have with all the others, you can change the display settings, you can decide exactly how you want this to appear. So this is, um, I know a feature that was requested by many of you in, in the webinar as well as afterwards. So I'm, I really hope that this uh, lives up to what you were expecting. Um, you can, also, I mean, this is a smaller one, but if you now hover over these charts, you can see the data labels. I know this was uh, yet another webinar uh, feature that we have since added. So yeah, these are maybe a few of these um, updates that we've made and we keep making these as, um, as we go. And I, I think to see this in action or to see the full potential of these, I'll pass it over to Shane who can show you how we view some of these in our templates. and. I'm sure you'll have your own way of using these as you as you play around with it. So yeah, Shane, over to you. Um, just just a quick one before we before we move over, and um, we do have a few comments in a uh, question. Sorry, in the um in the chat mm -hmm. that uh, we can of just course. go through. Uh, and uh, Josh, did you get your Wi-Fi to work? You're all set. Yep. Okay. Cool. Cool. Great. Um. Uh. Josh, do you, do you wanna do you wanna still do yours um presentation? Yeah, yeah sure. The and and maybe we, uh we can do it actually live on Alicia's screen right now. The only other other additional thing that I want to showcase is how easily you can share your information with your clients. Um, <clears throat> 
typically, I think what we found in the industry is that you have these static PDFs. And while they do get the job done in that your client can see the information, we think uh, we'd like to be a little bit more forward thinking. And why, can we, why can't we make these visuals a little bit more interactive for your clients? Um, so what Alicia is going to do is go ahead and um, click that link, Publish Live. What Publish Live allows you, you to do is now generate a link, right? As, as you're seeing here. And once we hit Published, we're going to see this link generated. And this is what you can share to your client. And when your client clicks the link, they're going to now see this a little bit more interactive visual. And as Alicia hovers over um, each of the, you know, the bars, for instance, they too are going to be able to see a little bit more of a drill down uh, ability here. And you're also noticing here that these tabs are also there. So instead of flipping between different PDFs, um, you now just have these tabs um, in which you can see full financial statements, drill down, or a high level overview. Um, it's not just a live feature, though. We also recognize that sometimes you close the books at one point in time, and you just want your client to see it at that point in time um, and not a live dashboard. So we do have the feature of publishing a snapshot. And what a snapshot does, as the name implies, is it allows you in that point in time to say, this is your data, your QuickBooks data, um, you know, uh, as of September. Right, and, and your client is only seeing that specific information that you want them to. Um, so I just want to highlight that one thing um, uh, you know, before we go into the consolidation portion, which I know is a hot topic, which is the ability to share uh, these dashboards easily. Yep, yep, that's a great point. And yeah, like the, the thing about a snapshot is the, the data will always be as of the time that you have published the snapshot. So if you are someone who's handling bookkeeping for your clients and you want you don't want them to to have permanent access to their to their data before you have um, closed the books, then you might find this feature particularly useful. However, if if you are a business owner and or if your clients are someone who really value that that you know access to to their own data all the time, then the best way is to actually just share a live link with them that they can view on their phone or on their laptops, and they have access to their live information on the go at all times. So. This is basically the um, the use case that we were designing for. But yeah, so I think I'll pass over to Shane to show you some of the consolidation and, and some more of how we've used these features. So yeah, Shane, over to you. Thank you, Alicia. Can you just meet? Yeah. Thanks. Um, I think this is a great place to start. So Alicia and I have been working on a few of our um, dashboards of the last two days and um, what i'm going to show you today is kind of what you can actually build um, using the dashboards tool and a few different use cases um, can everyone see my screen okay yes. perfect so um, what, what we've done first is kind of create the concept of a construction client and as you saw from alicia we've made use of the various tabs by splitting it into relevant sections. So for example, an executive summary, key financial overview, uh, project and vendors, profit and loss, et cetera. And the idea with this template was we wanted to have an executive summary, which would kind of give a snapshot of how the business is doing. So we have some kind of key metrics that the business wanted to achieve and whether they are on track and off track, some high level metrics month over month, key takeaways from the month, recommendations for the business and then a few key graphs here um, and then a nice uh, income by a project or customer which is quite relevant for a construction firm we then go into the key financial overviews and again we present some important metrics so cash balance current ratio working capital etc we also have a cash by month graph and we have a target line here. Um, I should have made it a little bit more realistic, but ideally we would want to see kind of how your customer is doing versus what they've set. Um, again, more useful graphs, income to cost of sales, um, net income, net, net income margin. So really just trying to cr uh, create metrics and graphs that are useful for your customers for their specific industries. Uh, I won't go through all the tabs in, in too much detail. Those will be here for a while. But again, just visualizations with key metrics and graphs over time. And then if they wanted to go into the details, they, they have full access to the profit and loss here, where again, they can collapse and expand as needed. And same for the balance sheet. 
and same for the cash flow statement. Another use case we thought of was nonprofits. Uh, obviously, nonprofits are a special breed, as we've learned uh, a lot of use of classes and uh, different terminology. So again, we've kind of just put some conceptual uh, things you might see in a nonprofit report, like what's your donor retention, uh, what's your grant utilization efficiency, and kind of again those high level metrics: how much, how much have we spent, how much have we raised, and how much cash on hand do we have as a as a nonprofit. And again, just kind of high level key takeaways and recommendations uh, for the business. And then again, a breakdown of funds by project, both received and paid. And then kind of, again, going a level deeper with the next tab. So kind of getting a, a cash balance by month, budget versus actual graphs, um, actual funds paid versus uh, funds received. And then we've also broken down a statement of activities by class. Um, so you can kind of get a quick summary view, the overall statement of activities, balance sheet, cash flow. Again, you get the idea. And Shane, um, the, the budgets that you showed there, is that something that you pulled from QuickBooks, entered externally? Mm -hmm. How's uh, that appearing? Yeah, great question. So you can actually do both. So we can pull data from QuickBooks or if you, if you, uh, manage your budgets separately in Google Sheets or Excel, we can also bring that in. Great, and then uh, third thing I wanted to show you guys was uh, an example of what we can do on consolidation. So what we have here is a group of three companies. You can see kind of, again, high level metrics, what is the total income and how does that break down by company gross profit and gross profit percentage, again, by company expenses and expense uh, percentage of income by company, you get the idea. So really just taking all those metrics um, at a high level on the left and breaking them down by company on the right. We then uh, have a detailed PNL here. This is actually a summarized one. Um, so you can kind of use the mapping feature we have in LiveFlow and really create those uh, streamlined um, consolidation reports that your clients can view. And what I want to show you next is the same dashboard, but just how easy it is to customize. So this is the dashboard we were viewing. Um, you'll see here we don't actually have a total column. If we want to bring that in, we could simply come in here and just say uh, show eliminations. And you'll now see we have the eliminations and total column added. And again, like if we wanted to move things around, we can very easily just, uh, yeah, we can just move this around. Uh, we can change the colors. We don't like, we don't like this color. We can change it. So yeah, fully customizable uh, and works for all your various entities. Um, that is everything I have to show today, but happy to answer any questions that anyone may have. Thank you, Shane. Yeah, this is, uh, this, this is awesome. And yeah, um, just to double down uh, for everyone's um, information, just to double, double down on what Shane said, um, really the, the the great thing about these dashboards is that they can also be utilized with any consolidation group that you have created in LifeFlow. So um, we have spent a lot of time solving multi-entity consolidation, and I think a lot of people on this call may already be using it, but if you're not, then we can highly recommend checking it out. And um, if you do have clients that are either in separate currencies or just need consolidation. And um, then we have a module that solves for that. But what's really nice now is that now you can also take the consolidated statements you've created with LifeFlow in our separate module and then um, visualize them in, um, in here. So I think um, we will just take a few questions uh, so just so we cover those. And let me just see here. Can one of you share your screen again, Alicia? Uh, can you pull it up just so we have the product in front? Then we'll do a few questions. So uh, Alan asked if we are able to show percentages of the variances for the key performance indicators. Um, Alicia, do you want to cover this one? So we have, um, in terms of variance versus, I'm assuming variance means versus a prior um, period of some kind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it shows up like this in a scorecard view. So in, in this specific case, and you can give this component its own um, view. So let's say we want to show it as 
I'm, I'm going to give an example here. This year to last month. And as, as we covered earlier, yeah, it's, it's useful to think of these with the table context. So if you want to compare, let's say, September income to August income, so we just go and flip to scorecard and you can um, pick the last one or you can just select September explicitly and then compare it to previous row. And then you can see my income actually declined month over month um, from the previous uh, the previous month. And I can once I have set this up once, I can then just come in here and flip this to um, any of the other metrics that are supported by that specific component. and. Um, you can see like a percentage change. Great, cool. And then uh, Jim and asked, we, we, we already answered this, I think in the chat, but let's just take it again. So um, can we pull timesheet data from QPO and use it in calculations and metrics? Yeah, yeah. so we, yeah, I mean, uh, this is the first time we've gotten this request. I'm very happy to see, um, you know, questions around more reports from QuickBooks because uh, a lot of people just focus on the main three and, and not as much on the others. Um, but yeah, basically, as I said, if the data is available in QuickBooks, we can build it. So if you don't see it out of the box, you just let us know. And then within a day, you should have this available. So as an example, um, I, I believe we had a request for uncategorized expenses. So if, if you just want to see it as, you know, in a either detail kind of view with all the expenses that your clients have not categorized, you can just straight up show it as a table. Or you can always um, visualize it in any way that makes sense, you know. So uh, I think we do actually have a component, um, a template somewhere with with the same concept. Yep. So <clears throat> where you can just start visualizing data that is not necessarily in one of the key final three statements, but it's there in QuickBooks, and then we can absolutely visualize it. So um, yes, if if you if you're using one of those time tracking uh, things in QB. Then yes, we can uh, we can bring it in. Great. Okay, and let's just take one a few more. So this one should be fast, but feel free to cover it, Alicia. So uh, can the client download the exam? Uh, can the client download, for example, the PNL as a PDF? Uh, I'm I'm you can in the sense like the the browser has the option to download it as a PDF. So if you are just creating one. A simple tab, and then you're just showing the PNL. Then they do have the option. Um, so yeah, if if that's that's the way you want to present the data, but it might be better to share it as a link. And and we do have the snapshots feature, which is kind of designed to work like a PDF. So they they can get the browser experience. They can see it on their phones, just like a PDF, except it's accessible via a link. So it's a little more. It's a better experience for them. Um, and you can also any snapshot that you've created. This, um, let's see if I publish a snapshot right now, you can always see all the snapshots that were issued in the past as well. So you have this record of, of all the, the I want to say live PDFs. I, I don't know if that's the best way to, to describe it, but um, I would encourage sharing it as a, as a web link rather than just a PDF. But if you must use PDF, then the browser does have a PDF, print to PDF function, I think so. Great. Okay, cool. Let's see. We have a few more. Okay, so I think what we'll do is uh, we'll take a few more questions um, just in a in a minute. Um, but uh, just to keep the webinar engaging here. So uh, there is a question that we discuss at LifeFlow a lot internally, which is, should we use a pie chart or not? And we would love to hear what you all think about that. So uh, for everyone that is on the call, could you please uh, vote just by putting a comment in the chat just yes or no yes means you're for pie charts pie charts no means that you are not for pie charts and if anyone um needs a reminder then here is an example so yeah please let's 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 get some votes uh, we would love to hear how this uh, how this stands <laughs> okay we got a few yes a few no's okay a few more <laughs> This is probably the most engagement we've seen uh, from our audience in all our webinars. It's good to see. Yeah. <laughs> it depends. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, if anyone has not voted yet, um, then uh, if, if, feel free to add your comments. But uh, I, I don't know if I can do the math in my head right here on, on what's the... <laughs> No, we should have Are we leaning towards yes or not? I I think yeah. there, I think that, that there is a favor for yes, but you know we can we can show the results as a pie chart in that case. You know? <laughs> so um, there's one cool. one other feature, by the way, that I wanted to I save for last. Um, but if there's any questions, I can take that or before or I can just yeah. Demo Let, that let's one. let's take let's take a few more questions. So um, mm -hmm. we have. Uh, Jim asked, can you produce an inception to date PL versus inception to date budget from QuickBooks? That would allow oh. us to have would allow for selecting which budget from each year. That's an interesting question. Um, Jim has all the interesting questions today. Uh, basically, we have you, this option for all, which is um, so if if I and I'm assuming you want to pull the report or I'm not sure if you want to pull a component or a, like a visual or a report, but I think it's, it's, it's my, my guess it's the financial statement. Yeah. Yeah. So in this case, um, it, so I've, I've set this thing to all and all simply means that as, as much data is available in your QuickBooks. So the, it is basically inception to date. So it will go all the way to, um, right now. So I think my mouse isn't working very well. Um, but yeah, basically you can do this for the PNL. Um, we don't currently support budget versus actuals as a statement yet. So it's just the PNL balance sheet and cash flow, but we will add that. Um, I think we will have to, like I don't have an immediate answer for you. And if we can show you budgets for multiple years in the same chart, because I'm not even sure that's something that we support in, um, in our spreadsheet app. So. But we will investigate a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, Jim, I mean, I, I would love to catch up sometime and, and understand a little bit more about um, what and why you are trying to present. Yeah, and and uh, Alicia, Jim just uh, made a comment here. So yeah, it's the PNL versus budget for inception to date, um, but on a total basis. So yeah, but we can we can I know you can follow up and we can take it offline uh, as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, we do have this option to just show like total only. So this is now the, these numbers are inception to date for PNL. Um, for the budget, yeah, I'll I'll have to check and let you know. Great. And then let's just take one more question from Ken. So uh, for budgeting, um, can you break down budget by class? Um, could the reports be dynamic? Uh, selecting a class would a drop down for an entity with multiple classes? Uh, so basically, so for budget versus actual, like I said, the, the code report is not yet there, but we have these components. So let, let me take one of these. So let's say we're doing, oh, I think let me make a smaller date range so that we don't take things. Yeah. So yeah, this is now my budget versus actuals, And, um, as you know, QuickBooks shows budgets for year, so I picked one. So yeah, this is now my budget to actuals. Let me take a slightly different color here. And uh, I can always either um, sorry apply a filter by class. So in this case, I have seven classes. So let's take a non-profit example. So now the data that you see here, this is filtered down only for the specific class that I chose, which is, you know, I'm gonna call it non profit class and I can repeat this and and have like one for for each class that I have so you'll have um, one per we also have these components called class benchmarking which so now you can see your income by class and by month for um for all your classes so if that's the thing that you want to see but um, we don't currently support this by class by month view for budgets. So you have two options. You can add, like get a budget versus actuals and put filters on it here, or you can show just the actuals, but you can show it in a dynamic view, um, like, oh, sorry, you know, dynamic view like this. One. So each, um, each bar or each line that you see in this graph is, is its own class. So these. Great. And I can keep adding this. Cool. And uh, 
just adding one more question that just came in um, while you're at this, Alicia, can you show income slash gross profit by customer type from uh, Jess? I, I don't know what customer type means. Is it by customer? Is that what you mean? Or? Uh, yeah, Jess, Jess, can you uh, clarify? It's a field in QuickBooks. Um, Okay. Um, the, I'll show you what we yeah. do. What we do have. Uh, did we say income? You want to say income? So if this yeah. is income, um, you can add targets by the way in case you um want to make a if you want like if you're tracking versus a target. But over here we have the option to switch to customer. I'm not sure if this is so. This is the field that's available in QuickBooks, and this is what you can see, um, in here. So you. If this is what you mean, then yes, we we can absolutely support it. Yeah, I think I can probably clarify this one. I I we can take this one offline. I think the the challenge in for the I think their API does not allow us to pull the the type of customer because it's a custom field. Uh, I think we have tried to do it before with the Google Sheets and Excel, but we'll we'll double uh -huh. check to see if there's anything we can we can do on it. Um, okay. If, yeah. Is, if it's a custom yeah. field, then probably not. If it's just like if it's the regular customer, then then it's already supported. Um, yeah. So so yeah. Any other question before I show you one last feature that we released today? So this is a fancy new one that again was highly requested. Um, no. Let's let's go let's go to that. Um, and just for everyone who's uh, on the call, if you um, want to see a personalized demo uh, of dashboards and want to see how it can work with your own clients or your own company, um, then we have dropped the link in the chat for where you can book a call with us. And then we would love to spend more time to go into detail with you. So feel free to just uh, click on that. Um, back to you. Yep. Okay. So let's say now we've spent some, like you you, you start using dashboards and you've um, set up a dashboard with all the functionality that is relevant for you. And you want to roll this out now for other clients, or rather the design is something that you have created and you want this to be your firm, firm template going forward. So you know you want every client in your firm to use this and you don't want to actually come and um, create this again and again for every single client that you have. So once you've set up your template, I'm gonna call this my... And you can hit publish just if you want to check what it looks like so yeah we see everything looks fine and we want this this data to to be rolled out now going forward so what i can come in and do is I come i look let me find my this is the template that i've created you can come in here and i can add this to a template library so up until now both in our spreadsheets version of the product as well as in dashboards, the only templates that you could access were the ones that we created for you. But now you can build your own templates. So you've created your dashboard, you hit add to template library. You'll notice it's gone temporarily. Um, it's actually now switched to this tab, which is where all your templates will live. So this is where um, every single member of your workspace will now be able to see the template that you've created in here as part of the template library. And this is something exclusive to you. So this Lifeflow is, is something that's public to every single customer of Lifeflow. But everything that you upload in this library is only available to your um, your employees. And let's say you are someone who's created multiple workspaces, like if that's how you're segmenting your clients, then all your workspaces will be able to see this specific template that you've now created. So this is a good way for you to have your firm templates. And obviously we'll be making improvements in this as we go along. And I'm very open to suggestions here, but um, I'm hoping that this is something that you can find a lot of use in going forward. Great. All right. Just wanted to get a quick uh, pulse check for everyone who is uh, still listening listening in. So thank you for uh, being with us for 45 minutes here on the, on the demo. Um, if you have uh, any questions, then uh, please feel free to just continue adding it in the chat. And uh, there's all, already been uh, quite a few. And um, so it makes a lot uh, more engaging with uh, with questions. Um, cool, Alicia, uh, more to show on this? 
Uh, no, well, this is it for now. I mean, if you give me enough time, I can keep going on and on about the product. But uh, I feel like we should save something for these one-on-one -on -one demos. So if you if you guys want, please do book something with me or Josh, and we're always happy to work with you and and build custom stuff as needed. Alicia, I, I just have one one question. I know you spent uh, feels like the the past three four months along with Lassie um, in terms of doing a lot of discovery and understanding what are the pain points of customers to build these visual dashboards. I know there are a lot mm -hmm. of existing solutions as well that maybe people are using in tandem. Just curious to understand from your perspective, what are the things that make LiveFlow's dashboards um, unique? Oh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes, you're right. We spend a lot of time doing uh, discovery around this this particular problem because as as many of you know, we, LiveFlow is, or we started out primarily as a spreadsheet interface, you know, so so, uh, we built a lot of these templates on the Google Sheets and, and Excel side of things. And even when we had uh, like these visual dashboards in, in Excel or in Google Sheets, people would still come to us and, and purchase that instead of going for any out-of-the-box um, solutions with you know any of our competitors or any other visualization software. And that's where we started. We want, wanted to know what, what, what was it that you know, people are still willing to invest in in a spreadsheet version of something that's not even as fancy, but it's still getting the job done. And we realize that the thing that people value the most, at least our customer base, and is is flexibility. So they want to be able to build dashboards that are as flexible as possible, and you just cannot beat spreadsheets when it comes to flexibility. So that's kind of where we started with this problem statement that we want to give the flexibility of spreadsheets, but there is still the issue of with a lot of flexibility comes a lot of learning curve and, and really this problem of you have to spend time and effort building these templates, building these charts. And, and sometimes you just don't have that time or sometimes even the skill, you know, maybe somebody on the staff isn't as qualified in to, to build these as you would like. So you want to give that high quality and you want the flexibility but you, you want to make that trade-off. So <clears throat> you you go with spreadsheets as like a hedge, but it's not the best solution, It's but it's getting the job done. So we wanted to take that, this, this pool of people, people who value flexibility and give them something more. So that's where we started with dashboards. And that's kind of why immediately out of the box, we support deeply flexible components. So I know it doesn't, like it, on the, the first glance, it's not very obvious, but every single one of these components are so deeply flexible that they can just respond to any configuration of dates to of um, this, the, the access settings. You know, if, if you want to show something by week and then you want to zoom out and actually look at it by month, you know, I want to see how I did over a, from my inception till today. And then I actually want to zoom in and see what, what was my performance like last month and then switch back out to see what it was three months ago, you can do all of it with just a few clicks. So that's the kind of flexibility we want to provide. And that's the, I want to say core philosophy that we have in mind as we design every one of these functions overall, flexibility and ease of use, where some of our competitors will probably do one or the other good, but you know, lose out on the other. So we're trying to build as, as much as possible, but yes, yeah, as, as far as we can tell, at least so far, I think ours are definitely more flexible and more customizable than any of the other um, solutions on the market right now. And there's still a long way to go. We're still building these out and there's still so much more that we want to add in here, but yeah, that's the long and short of it. Great, cool. And for, um, for folks still listening in here, so we would love to just ask you one question and it would be great if you can comment in the, uh, in the chat, um, which is that we would love to hear if there is anything that you had hoped uh, to see from our product today that you have not seen, and in 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 that case, um, what are you looking for, so that we can um, possibly build that for you for the next webinar that you might join in a few weeks or a little bit later. So if you have any specific requests where you're like, I was really hoping that the product could do this thing for me, some some people. Could commented already can it do a bit of forecasting can it do the budgeting on inception to date um can it show variances but if if you have any anything that you are hoping that that we could do but we don't do yet then um please drop it in the chat and we would love to to know about it 
Cool. And then um, last thing before we uh, call it a day is um, if you've been on the call, then uh, we are more than happy to give you a free trial of Lifeo dashboards so that you can test it out with your own clients and figure out a best way to, to go about using it. Um, uh, you can reach out to Josh at Josh at Josh at lifeload.io uh, to get access and um, we will provide you. And again, feel free to just book a call with us as well and we will um, uh, chat to you one-to-one. Uh, -one. Cool. Um, with that, we will put back the music. And thank you to everyone for joining and uh, we wish you a great Thursday and see you all soon.